Hey there, welcome to a brand new episode of Music Express. My name is Twan and in this week's vlog you will see my interview with June about his classic hardcore vibes. And this is actually the 150th interview I'm doing for Music Express. So at the end of this video you will hear how you can win one of the signed hardcore vibes CDs. So stay tuned. But before we start with the interview, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and very important also make sure to click the bell button because then you will get a notification the next time a new vlog is online. All right, here it is, the story behind Hardcore Vibes, my interview with June. Enjoy. Oliver Froning is a German DJ and producer who's active in the music scene for a very long time already. You might know him best as the man behind the project June, which became one of the most successful dance acts from Germany in the mid 90s. June had hits with tracks such as Can't Stop Raving, Are You Ready To Fly, Rainbow To The Stars, Hand In Hand and more. For this week's vlog I spoke to June to ask him about the story behind Hardcore Vibes, which was the debut single for June back in the year 1995. My first question to him was around what age he started to listen to music. I remember sitting in my in the car with my mother she had like this little mini cooper and she was like turning up like simon Garfunkel, and uh i still love that record that was like like a real inspiration then uh i remember i had uh am tag als comedy karma Stab. that was my one of my first singles mm -hmm. I, I remember this one i got you can look it up what kind of song it was it was a german song that, I think that was my first yeah. single. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, when you were 20 years old, you got your first uh, job as a DJ. Uh, yes. What can you tell about that? Uh, it was amazing. Before, before I was um, working in, in this club and I was collecting glasses, like cleaning up and everything. Uh, you have to start somewhere. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Uh, but I was so into music. I was like in, into dance music. I, I loved dancing. I loved, I loved music. I loved, uh, yeah. Everything. I remember when I was um, there was this um, Radio Luxembourg. They had like this this dance shows on on the radio, and I remember uh, recording like from the radio and cutting the the um, the guy who was talking yeah, the DJ, out. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and just to have the music and the next day on the tape and listen to to the music all over again. That was that was crazy. What was the question? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, re I remember. I, I was. It, it wasn't on a weekend. I think it was during the week. But um, there was this DJ, and DJ, and I. I think he was not playing too good. And I, I always thought, oh, I couldn't do better than this because people were like really bored. It was a, uh, in a club called Calypso in Münster. I remember. And one night, this guy went. It was so drunk. I think it was on Southern Comfort. Is this still around this drink, Southern Comfort? Yeah. yeah. And he was like, he couldn't play anymore. So then I said to the to the manager, uh, uh, I've got some records, so uh, let me try it, so I can I can save the night. So I went there, and I played, and I succeeded, and I got the job. Oh, nice. So yeah. So from there, I started DJing, but. Um, not like in these days so i, I had played like in, it was in, in 81 there was hip-hop there was like uh dark music like sisters of mercy there was uh i have to go through all the records to mm -hmm. to give you a complete mm -hmm. list but it was so many kinds of of music like human league yeah. and uh so we played like a lot of music there was no mixing there was just the music and people dancing yeah. so oh. Uh, yeah, that's how it started. Mm, nice, nice. So yeah, for this vlog, we're going to talk about your classic uh, Hardcore Vibes, uh, yep. track which came out uh, back in the year 1995 under the name June. Uh, first things first, how did you come up with the name June? Oh, uh, I think most of my fans already know, but uh, I'm a huge fan of the movie, um, which came out in, I think, in 84 it was. And uh, I liked like, the, the whole... Uh, environment in in the film and the, the look and the story and i haven't read the books before everyone told me you should read the books but uh yeah i'm not that, that of a reader in during holidays i mm -hmm. read a lot but 
So, uh, but I loved the film and I loved everything. So um, we we had the we had hardcore vibes first, and uh, when when we got the deal with the record company, I said, "So, uh, what's the name?" <laughs> And then I had to go back and think about it. So uh, I thought about like the, calling it Arrakis or uh, like like the planet and, mm -hmm. and things from the movies. And then I thought, no, if you think about Dune all the time, why not Dune? So yeah, it was born. Yeah. Then I checked online. There was some some project of uh, what's it called the French guy, Jean Michel Jean? No, no, no. Uh, uh, electronic project with uh, never mind. Yeah. Uh, there was a, a project, kind of project already, but uh, nobody cared. So yeah, yeah, Dune. Dune it was. Um, Dune it was. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, um, Hardcore Vibes was a debut track for Dune, and for this one you did work together with uh, Jens Utrich. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Jens Utrich. Yeah, Utrich. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, do you remember how, how you got to meet him? Yes, yes, yes. I was so ambitious. I was so ambitious because um, I was working at a record shop, and he was working at another record sh store. And um, it's a long story because I was playing at a club uh, called the Odeon and his girlfriend, um, Anna, she came up to me one day, one night when I was playing and I said, you should really meet my boyfriend. He's like uh, working with music in his studio and maybe you can get together. And I never met him before. So, um, but this record store, I always uh, bought my records. So, uh, one day I, I went to the record store and said, hey, I talked to your girlfriend and she said, we really should uh, hook up and uh, do something together. How about it? What do you like? And he showed me some some music he likes and uh, I, I said, yeah, not this also. Let's meet. So, um, yeah, then we, we met and we uh, he, he worked in this amazing studio in, uh, in the Münster area where we live um, and uh, the Principal Studios. And it's just huge. It's like like a like a media complex with the large SSL consoles and uh, yeah, very famous people recording there and uh, like the Toten Hosen and uh, yeah, long long story. Um, so yeah, and um, yeah, we we got along really great together. So um, and at that point, um, I said after a few few weeks we were working uh i i quit my day job i think we should go for music full time and he said um well that's a great idea maybe i do that too <laughs> risky <laughs> very risky yeah we we uh we did some uh some some tracks together like like odd, really odd ones uh in our career which which were uh, some of them were released but um it wasn't the name dune but uh we did that together and uh yeah, and then um, one day we we bumped into the uh, hardcore vibes sample on a, on a sampling CD, and we did a few versions of, of this. Uh, and the sample was so much fun. We have like you can you can listen on the on the remixes. Uh, we we did a lot of like long versions, like ten minutes or eleven minutes of hardcore madness. That's one version called. I came up with the idea, um, and um, yeah. But the, the, the main song um, was the one where my, my, my niece, Janine, um, is uh, saying this one is dedicated to all the ravers in the nation. That's what this one became the single version because that's the one with the most like, yeah, iconic melody mm -hmm. and beat. Yeah, super catchy. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So she, she was 11 years old then, I think? Yeah, my, because... Um, my uh, sister uh, was married to an English guy and she lived in, um, in, in London, in England. And uh, they came over with my, with my niece for visiting uh, mother and uh, grandmother. And I don't know if it was like, like a birthday or whatever, but the, they came to the studio and she really liked the, the studio. And um, because she, so, so the vocals came by coincidence because um, she was in the the recording situation and i put her headphones on and i put her in front of the microphone so she never heard her voice like on the on the cans so um she was standing there and she had a really fun like i, I was saying try this words and this words and uh yeah she was really getting into this so uh and uh 
I was spontaneous and uh, then I wrote some things down. Wait, wait, wait. We, we record some, some of something else because I really found it really cute because mm -hmm. we will uh, record it after this a lot of vocals with her to like like tiny little pieces with like children voices. Mm -hmm. So yeah, and there was a stanza in the sentence. Uh, yeah. This one is dedicated to all the ravers, which I came up with, with which really fitted into yeah, the track, yeah, yeah, yeah. into the break. Yeah, so yeah. Um Did, did you tell her you were actually going to use it, the, the vocals in a track? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah she was really excited. I yeah. mean, imagine you are 11 and you you be in a recording. Yeah, how cool but, is that? Yeah, yeah. but uh, we, she, we we didn't know at that point that it would be like successful. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I read somewhere that you did promise Janine that you would pay her driving lessons if the track would become like a number one hit. <laughs> um, I know in Germany, Hardcore Vibes became a top 10, uh, sorry, a top five hit, and here in the Netherlands it ended up at number eight in the charts. Yeah. So so you didn't pay her for her driving lessons or did you? No, she she has the driving license yeah, yeah. Uh, already. Yeah, she, it took very long. So it was a very expensive <laughs> driving license. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, yeah, okay, okay. It, it was worth it. Yeah, yeah. 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 So uh, can you tell a bit more about the production process from Hardcore Vibes? Oh, it was uh, yeah, it's so long ago. But uh, I remember we were um, one day because I, I was still working in this um, in in the shop when uh, Jens called me and said, um, "You have to come immediately. Yeah, do you have to come uh, earlier than than usually? Mm -hmm. So uh, maybe you can finish the job now and come and." Uh, I really have to play. He was so excited and played a piece of uh, what he did in the studio. And I think I have to come. I come immediately. Wait, wait. <laughs> I packed my thing. I went to the studio and uh, yeah, he had this this uh, this amazing uh, ding 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 line, which I really because we were working on on so many melodies mm -hmm. and, and things to to put in. But this melody he, he came up with, it was so simple and so so catchy. Yeah. So uh, yeah, so then we, we finished the song, uh, I think on that day, we finished the song. Okay, and do you remember some of the equipment that was used for the track? Oh, we uh, we recorded in the small studio, it was also, uh, I don't know, was it a Soundcraft uh, mixing desk? I don't know, maybe it was a Soundcraft or Midas, I don't know, but it was a huge console mm -hmm. as in the big recording mm -hmm. there was this SSL and we used um, like uh, uh, Yamaha synthesizers the TX what is it called TX can't remember because it's so long yeah, ago. And we, we don't have it anymore uh, we we used uh, um, the Roland JD 990 I think and did we have that at that time or was it afterwards um, and what else we used samples so I remember the, that uh, I, um, I collected a lot of records. Mm -hmm. That time I, I was really like into into jungle music. So things from Slipmad and all the guys yeah. from from the UK. And uh, yeah, I remember I sampled the the, the loop from Slipmad. Mm -hmm. So not from 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 the other. That's all too long. Yeah. Yeah. And. Uh, Yeah, with a turntable. So we we had like the obviously we have the uh, S1100 sampler from Archive. So everything has to go in there. Mm -hmm. So and uh, some we 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 already had 16 tracks tape machines, mm -hmm. which we already also used for for re-recording things and put it in, uh, put it back on uh, into the sampler. That was really fun to make and uh, yeah. Uh, what we what we used so, and yeah you just said like it, it took you like maybe one day to finish the entire track no 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 it did uh we had different versions so we had to tweak here and there with the with the bass drums and things still until it sounded right but uh in the end it was like uh i think two two to three days yeah, yeah. Still, still not bad yeah yeah, yeah yeah so was it hard to find a label once the track was finished um yeah in the, in the beginning yeah so uh we we went with a different version before to to uh to record companies um because we thought that was the version but um in in the end um we we signed up with motor music where Sasha Basler was the A&R and he was already famous for signing up like Westman and Marusha and Lo Spirit they were mm -hmm. working together yeah, with yeah. them and uh, 
because I knew him from from uh, from Münster, from uh, my my hometown, and um, so I contacted him directly. So it was like, uh, yeah, yeah, he he saw the the potential the potential of the song. <laughs> so yeah. what did, what did happen after the release? Did it become like a hit straight away? Um, what, what was really uh, am- I mean, he he believed in the song, and he said, "Yeah, you have to do a like a, like a mini tour, maybe." So to go into clubs and uh, perform that track. So uh, we started like a with the with the guy who did the um, the bookings for us. We started like a mini tour with just one song. That was so crazy, and uh, yeah, we had the uh, this MS Twenty, which is in video. This uh, Quirk MS Twenty synth and uh, uh turntables so and uh, that was our like like setup mm-hmm. where we well jens and i performed with and um yeah we did this like little tour and the dance charts became like really uh it, it entered like i don't know like like low but mm-hmm. really rises throughout yeah. uh, uh really um quick time to to number I think it was what number one in the in the dance charts, and then it moved from the dance charts into the, um, yeah, the regular me- charts, yeah. regular media control charts. It was yeah. then so, uh, and for music like this, it was like really special. Yeah. So uh, w- when it came in, in into the dance charts, we already were celebrating at the in in Hamburg the record company because it was such a success mm-hmm. to go into the dance chart yeah. with music like this. And when it went into the into the normal chart, it was like unbel- mm-hmm. unbelievable. So yeah. yeah. Do you remember hearing hardcore vibes for the first time on the radio yourself? I can't remember anymore. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, because it was played a lot, but, yeah. but I can't remember the first time. Oh, yeah. So, but it was like like I got goosebumps yeah. every time um, because it's so special. You never had like like success in your life mm-hmm. with, with, I mean, success with what you're doing like in in your everyday job, but in in that kind of environment it was yeah. like unbelievable yeah. it was unreal yeah so yeah um was there a video clip already at the time or was was this one made after the label found out that the track was getting very successful no when it entered the entered the charge because in uh, in the early days it took like quite a while from the dance charts to the to the media control charts it like like uh like two to three months mm-hmm. time span i have to look it up in my uh, oh, I <laughs> in my archive how long it, t- it took but um no I, I remember we got we got this um because the, the record company already worked together with uh, some um companies who doing like like the vo- uh, the, the the videos at that mm-hmm. time and um yeah we got the script and the story and we wanted to re- have a really like colorful video and i remember we um uh, where did we where did we go there it was London, right? Or was it Amsterdam? Was it Amsterdam? I, I know Carlstop Raven was recorded in Amsterdam. I'm not, not, not sure about this one. It was in London, right, right. Of course it was in London, yes. I remember because the, the, the dancers who are uh, hired for this, they, they were English. Right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So what was, was it, yeah, must be weird, like doing your first video clip? Uh... I mean, obviously, if, if when you are a DJ, you 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 used to st- stand in front of people mm-hmm. and perform and do things, and you you can't be shy. Mm-hmm. So uh, that that was okay, and it really was an experience. And we were also excited to to do this, and it was um, yeah. and to see like they they built this like this beautiful setup of the the flowers and the garden mm-hmm. and. Um, in, back in the days, the productions were like huge. So you've got so many people working on a set and the prizes for videos were like really, really mm. high. I mean, we, we got this, I think it was like 60,000 D-Max, so it's like 30,000 euros, mm-hmm. which kind of a bargain yeah, yeah. in in that time. Mm-hmm. Now you would like do a movie for this. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. With this, this equipment you have now, but um, yeah, it was, it was right, 
really amazing. Yeah, cool. I, I, w I wasn't quite sure about the green man in the in the video. Mm -hmm. if that was my thing, but uh, it turned out to be like like, yeah. like a uh, like a really hook in yeah. the <laughs> in the thing. <laughs> Yeah, the, the album version is 3 minutes and 33 seconds, uh, while the single version is almost 5 minutes long. Yeah. Usually the album version is longer compared to the single version. Yeah. Uh, do you have any idea why the longer version was used for the single? Um, because it was like, that's the version. Yeah. And um, if you know the history of uh, MTV and Viva, the music channels, um, they said we only play videos for three minutes and 30. Mm -hmm. So if you listen to 90s music, everything is three minutes and 30 mm -hmm. because everyone agreed to, because we were, uh, we all wanted to be played on MTV and Viva. So we said, okay, we always cut our versions on that length. We stop our song at 330, mm -hmm. 333 or whatsoever. So that's the video version. And that's why most of the songs are that thing. Yeah. So, but I was into dance music, and, and I was like, a song has to be, has to be in uh, a beginning and an end. Yeah. And what's happening in between? It's uh, it's a musical thing. If it's seven minutes, it's seven minutes. It's that's the song. So um, that's why we made like the long version. Yeah, yeah. Ah, nice. So yeah, what, when you guys finished the track, did did you have any idea that the track would become such a classic and that it's still being played more than twenty five years later? Uh, I would play the lottery every day <laughs> if I knew things like this. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. no, 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 no. I, I couldn't. Even, I, I even now it's it's hard for me to imagine because um, I'm I'm still like like playing every weekend and um, it's such a lot of fun and I'm in every set I'm playing. Yeah, the vibe. yeah. And it's uh, yeah, it's, it's so great even to see like young people. Um, Partying like yeah, it's never like, even not born maybe when it came out. Yes, yeah. yeah. And even for me, it's it's, it's still fun to play yeah. after like a, a million times, and then I heard the song myself. Ah, so, good, good. Yeah. so, do you have any idea how many copies have been sold of Hardcore Vibes? Uh, I've got a gold record which is really nice. Um, it's like a like a triangle uh, frame with a golden record inside, and then they put like sand in the in the back then another like glass screen mm -hmm. and they put then they put water oh. in front of the next screen and then another stream so it everything inside moves in in this golden record and so it has to creative yes 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 unfortunately the the glue from the from the back of the golden record oh. uh, um corroded or mm -hmm. how do you say yeah, I, I don't know and the the it, it moved so well, the, you, it's not looking that yeah fine anymore i have to get someone to, to fix it to fix it to get but you have to get the water out the sand out yeah. so and <laughs> uh, to to get this but to answer your questions uh it has to be in in uh, in hard copies it had to be 250,000 copies um which sounded uh, only a, a little compared to to Spotify plays, but it was a lot then. Yeah. So it, you get a gold record for oh, it's a physical copy. So people had to go to the record store yes, to, to, yes. to buy it yeah. and yeah. pay like yeah. ten, five five euros at the time. Yeah. 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 So what is your personal highlight when it comes to the release of Hardcore Vibes? The personal highlight. Personal highlight was the dance charts. So, so it was like the f first call of the record company, which was saying you entered the dance charts mm -hmm. because we didn't expect yeah. that because it was uh, it was a different different tune. So, so no one in Germany ever did a, a, a track like this. Mm -hmm. I mean, there were like like harder music from 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 Low Spirit, and from from West Bam and Marusha and things around already. Uh, Mark O released uh, at that time, but um, yeah, yeah, uh, nice. So in 2019, you made a new version of Hardcore Vibes together with Mental Tio and your niece Kelly did the re-record the famous yeah, Phantom yeah, again. Yeah, yeah. That version never came out. No, 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 no. And the reason for that? It doesn't reach the the, the quality of yeah. So for so the quality control set like nope. <laughs> yeah, we 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 all agree that it's not. Uh, it's it's nice, but. Uh, it's not enough. Yeah. So that's that's why we decided uh, it was a fun a fun thing to make. But let's try something yeah, different. Yeah. Yeah. Is, is it the same with, with the version that came out in two thousand? Well, that was made in two thousand eighteen, like Hardcore Vibes two point oh. Yeah. I, I I really want. I I was into that, but I couldn't find anything that because 
I, I tried different versions, different melodies, and nothing fitted really. So, so I buried yeah. this idea. So, and I, I, I can imagine it's really difficult because it's such an iconic track. Yes, and yes, every, yes, yes. And there will always be people that say, "Like, yeah, yeah. the original is better." Yeah. But, but it's, it's always the same. I mean, you, you got people. I mean, why don't you re-record here? It's your track. Why don't you do something new? And he said, "Oh yeah, great idea. You, you really enthusiastic and." You say, well, yeah, why not? Let's try it. And then you, yeah, um, to push yourself, you do a pose, then you, and then, uh, yeah, like it's always in life, you think, ah, yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe better or not. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Let's stick to the real one. So, yeah, in 2025, Hardcore Vibes turns 30. That means also the June project turns 30. Yes. Do you think yes. we can expect something special for the 30th anniversary? Uh, I don't know yet. Yeah. I, I, I'm thinking about something. But let's see. You, you, still, you still have time. I still have time. Yeah, yeah. But I, I, I would like to do something special, like a re-release on vinyl, maybe, or something like this. Oh, yeah, sounds good to me. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, in 2022, you released a few tracks such as uh, "Running Up That Hill," "Fight for Love," and "Forever Young." Yeah. Um, are you working on new music as well? Yeah, I just had a a, a single coming out, uh, which is called "Revenge," which is uh, which is out now, which you can buy on my. Spotify account mm -hmm. or stream yeah. or whatever or Beatport on yeah everywhere everywhere yeah, yeah. so I know what, what can you tell about that track what kind of style is it it's uh, oh it's um it's it's a dance track but it's totally different I bumped into like like this this beautiful samples which are more like uh I never done that before mm -hmm. so yeah. Yeah. But here for yourself. Yeah, okay, we'll, we'll check it out. I'll, yeah. I'll put the link in the video. Yeah, too. yeah, that will yeah. be great. Yeah. And are there still people you would like to work with? Uh, he, yeah, yeah. There, there are a lot of people. So, because uh, in dance music, there are always like like people um, which are coming with music that, that inspires you. Mm -hmm. So, you hear things and you play, say, that's exactly what I would love to do with my uh, things mm -hmm. and yeah there so there are a lot of like uh, collaborations uh, in my head sometimes I, I, I write them and um, yeah we plan things and yeah sometimes it happens and sometimes yeah, yeah. Oh, okay so, but uh, but that's, that's stuff in the works uh, for later this year uh yeah 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 i'm i'm yeah but i can't tell now because okay. i if it's not coming out yeah, that's, 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 so is there still something on your pocket list music wise no 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 not no. like a like a platinum record or like no 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 i i achieved the the goals i i wanted to achieve with music so uh uh, I'm I'm really blessed that, that everything uh, happened until now. And I, what what I would like to is like um, yeah, play for the people as long as I can. Yeah. So um, because I I really love to go on stage yeah. and and play as a DJ. So oh, this is like yeah, yeah. That's that, that's a good answer. And the last question: pineapple on pizza? Yes or no? Pizza? Yes. Pineapple? Yes. Together. I used to love it. <laughs> I, I don't know if I would order it today or if, if with that, with that people. You know. It's not on your VJ rider. No, 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 no. On my on my technical rider, actually, like two bananas, um, a sugar-free Red Bull, uh, a bottle of water, a spoon, and a towel. Oh, so healthy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> See, people always think that the DJ light is very rock and roll, but yeah, not. Yeah. I know different different yeah, lighters yeah. which have different yeah, yeah, different yeah. style. I was thinking about champagne, but I don't drink champagne. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I think usually when you have like gigs, do, do you drive yourself or? Uh, my wife Michaela is always with me yeah. every time, every day. So um, she drives and I prepare myself. Like yeah, how oh, the shows. Nice. Yeah, yeah. All right. Thanks a lot for your time. And good luck with everything. Yeah. Thank you. All right, that was it. This week's vlog, my interview with Oliver, aka June, and the story behind Hardcore Vibes. Oliver, thanks a lot for your time. Much appreciated. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the vlog. If you did, make sure to give this video a like, leave a comment in the comment section below, and very important, make sure to subscribe. Also make sure to click the bell button, because then you will get a notification the next time a new vlog is online. And I did another interview with June 
and in that one he's gonna talk about the story behind Can't Stop Raving. I hope to have that interview online in a couple of weeks from now, so stay tuned. And as I already said, this one was my 150th interview for Music Express. So after the interview, June signed a couple of Hardcore Vibes CDs and I'm gonna give away a few. There's a few that I'm gonna give away on my Patreon page for which you can find the link in the video description. But I'm also gonna give one away here on YouTube. And the only thing you need to do is to leave a comment in the comment section and let me know why you deserve to win this signed Hardcore Vibes CD. I will announce a lucky winner in a couple of weeks, so good luck. Once again, thanks for watching and until next time, bye bye.